For many years, the beautiful Englishwoman Alice Keppel was involved with the Prince of Wales, future King Edward VII. The daughter of the fourth baronet from Edmiston, she possessed extraordinary charm. With blue eyes, blonde hair and alabaster skin, she married George Keppel at the age of 23. Family life brought them both joy, and their daughters, Violet and Sonia, remembered that their home was always filled with love and joy. But financial difficulties were a constant source of concern for Alice and George. They lacked the means to maintain their lifestyle. The officer's allowance did not allow them to live as they wished. With her husband's consent, Alice began to accept attention from wealthy gentlemen. Their gifts and influence helped them to sustain their home and enjoy life. George himself was not always faithful to his wife, but he believed that if she returned to him, it would not bother him. Alice had the unique talent of making men happy, so why not take advantage of this gift? In 1898, she met the Prince of Wales, who was always ready to be enchanted by a beautiful woman. He was fascinated by the cheerful and charming Mrs. Keppel. At the time of their meeting, the Prince of Wales was already 56 years old, but Alice's youth and beauty completely captivated him. The age difference was 26 years, but it did not bother Alice. Alice became the Prince of Wales's ideal favorite, causing all others to be forgotten. Everyone noticed Alice's positive influence on the Prince of Wales. Even his wife, Alexandra, had to accept her as a rival, as thanks to Mrs. Keppel, Bertie's outbursts of anger became much less frequent. The beauty knew how to calm her patron. But let's return to the jewels. Camilla's main family adornment is the Cubit Tiara. The Cubit Tiara, sometimes referred to as the Cubit Shan Tiara, belonged to Camilla's grandmother, Sonia Keppel, whose mother was Alice Keppel. Sonia was married to the respectable Roland Cubit, hence the name of this diadem. Sonia loaned her diamond tiara to Camilla for her wedding to Andrew Parker Bowles in 1973. When Sonia passed away in 1986, the tiara was inherited by Camilla's mother, Rosalind. When Rosalind married Major Bruce Shand, a hero of World War II in 1946, she chose to wear flowers instead of the tiara. Rosalind passed away in 1994, leaving the tiara to Camilla, her elder daughter. In 2006, Camilla's daughter Laura continued the wedding tradition by wearing the tiara on her own wedding day. After marrying Prince Charles, who was then the Prince of Wales, Camilla, now the Duchess of Cornwall, decided to continue the tradition of royal women wearing family jewels at royal events, as Queen Mary did wearing the Tech Turquoise tiara, the Queen Mother with the Strathmore Rose tiara, and a Princess Diana with the Spencer tiara. Since then, Camilla has occasionally worn her family tiara to diplomatic receptions and dinners alongside the Crown's tiaras. The Cubit Shan tiara features a band of floral diamond ornamentation with a diamond flower at its center. Camilla also possesses another family heirloom, the Keppel tiara. Originally a gift from Edward VII to his favorite, Alice Keppel, Camilla's great-grandmother. Alice received many jewelry gifts from the king, most of which were inherited by her younger daughter, Sonia. The tiara is made of gold and platinum with diamonds and synthetic rubies. The choice of synthetic rather than real rubies can be explained by the fact that synthetic rubies were relatively new at the time and were in high demand. Edward VII acquired the tiara in Paris in the early 1900s. The choice of stones is also not accidental. In the language of gemstones, the combination of rubies and diamonds signifies enduring love. The design of the tiara is likely based on a French hair ornament from the 18th century. Some of Alice's jewels remained in the family. Others were sold over the years. It is said that Prince Charles always found Camilla's connection to his great-grandfather's mistress amusing. So much so that with the help of the jeweler, Van Cleef and Arpels, the prince embarked on a search for Alice Keppel's jewelry collection. Charles tracked down this tiara and bought it for Camilla. The tiara can be worn as a necklace. Since the tiara is very delicate, Charles commissioned the jeweler to turn it into a permanent necklace and a pair of earrings. This relic has been seen on Camilla only once. Charles also tracked down another tiara belonging to Camilla's great-grandmother. It is said that Charles paid £100,000 for Alice Keppel's diamond tiara, which had been stored in a London jeweler's safe for years. The reason why Charles decided to redesign the tiara into a necklace and earrings is unknown. Perhaps the tiara seemed too lightweight for his wife's lush hair, and he saw the potential for creating other pieces of jewelry, but Camilla wears this set quite often for ceremonial occasions. 
This set is perhaps the most luxurious and expensive of Camilla's personal adornments. Camilla's small brooch at the civil wedding ceremony held significant symbolic value, adorned with diamond feathers of Prince Charles. Attached to a black pearl surrounded by diamonds, the brooch replaced the traditional gold crown, from which three ostrich feathers extend, symbolizing the Prince of Wales's heraldic emblem. By marrying Charles, Camilla essentially became the Princess of Wales, although she does not use that title. This brooch is among the treasures commissioned by King Edward VII for Camilla's great-grandmother, Alice Keppel. Charles redeemed this brooch and presented it to Camilla as one of their wedding gifts. Camilla occasionally wears this brooch. Another enduring piece in her collection is the diamond and turquoise jewelry set. The demi perua comprises a necklace and earrings. The magnificent necklace features turquoise surrounded by diamonds. Each large round stone adorned with diamonds is accompanied by a pear-shaped turquoise also embellished with diamonds. Rows of diamonds separate the large stones. However, this masterpiece of jewelry must be seen. The description fails to convey its beauty and the way light dances on the facets of the diamonds. The style of the necklace resembles pieces popular in the late Victorian and early Edwardian eras. The earrings follow the same design with a round turquoise stone accompanied by a pear-shaped one, both adorned with diamonds. Judging by the appearance of the demi perua it was likely created in the late 19th or early 20th century. Unfortunately, the exact time and the name of the master craftsman are unknown. Essentially, there is no information about the history of the necklace, which is quite unfortunate, as it was surely worn by notable women. Perhaps significant passions surrounded it. Hopefully, someday something interesting will be unearthed about its past. Some time ago, there were speculations that the Duchess of Cornwall might have inherited a necklace from her great-grandmother Alice Keppel, who was a prominent socialite and the mistress of King Edward VII for many years. It seems that unconventional relationships with English kings run in the family. Unlike the necklace, which appears to have been Alice's legacy, another precious keepsake, a cigarette case, was gifted by Alice to Edward. It featured a snake encrusted with diamonds, biting its own tail a symbol of eternal love. The cigarette case was crafted in the unique Fabergé technique, where the relief of the gold base shines through perfectly smooth, translucent enamel. When Edward VII passed away, his widow, Alexandra, decided to return the blue cigarette case to Alice as a tribute to the late king. Then, 25 years later, when Alice also passed away, her daughter-in-law proposed returning the cigarette case to the royal collection, where it regained its place. So which of these treasures appeal to you the most? Write in the comments. Also write what jewelry you would like the next videos to be about.